Hello, everyone. Welcome to the CTX ScienceCast. My name is Anderson Fernandez, and I'm here with my co-workers, Emma and Andy. How's it going, guys? Great. How are you? Pretty good. Um, we're here at the campus of Central Texas College. Uh, that's where we're located at, the Mayborn Science Theater. And uh, today we have uh, some very cool subjects to talk about. Uh, one of them is, did you guys hear that uh, people are not going to be thirsty, thirsty in Mars anymore? <laughs> What? I didn't know there were people on Mars in the first place to be thirsty. Haven't you so seen fine. Mars Attacks? Oh. <laughs> no, but Great they movie. Come to Earth. From Mars. Mars isn't in that movie. <laughs> but that's where they came from. Well, I'm sure they were quenched. That's fine. <laughs> and uh, the other thing is that uh, NASA found blue skies in Pluto. Mm. But pretty there's cool. no people there, so that doesn't matter. I'm not sure, because it's pretty far. Definitely not the aliens from Mars Attacks, who, as we have established, are from Mars. No, it would be yes. awesome if they made a sequel called Pluto Attacks. Is yes. that the Mars Attacks <laughs> people going to Pluto, or people from Pluto coming to Earth, or people from Pluto going to Mars? You should sell your ideas to Hollywood, because <laughs> they're running out of... They're bringing 80s movies now, so... Yeah, right. yeah. So... Uh, and then the other thing we're going to talk about is uh, Halloween astronomy. So yep. we're going to talk about a few facts, uh, a few astronomy things going on Ooh. during Halloween. Spooky, Spooky astronomy. Right? Yes. Woo. That's right. So let's go ahead and start like we always start with some science facts. So let me go ahead and start. Okay. My fact is about Mars. So please don't, don't go find <laughs> my... Answer the answer for my question in Mars, okay? Good so deal. don't Ready? look at Mars. Yeah. So, what is the name of the tallest mountain in the solar system? Oh, I know that one. I forgot it. Mars though. Mountain Four. No. Is that I said not? solar system. Are you sure it's Mars? Yes. Yeah, it's on Mars. I know, I, I know it's on Mars. Also, you said don't look for the answer on Mars. Well, I'm a rebel. Which Andy's doing <laughs> right now. Thanks Which for great helping audio out. Format. Thanks for helping out, Andy. Uh, uh, well, I'm just trying to make sure. No, it's not that one. Or is it? No. Yeah. This is seriously great entertainment. It is, if isn't just it? Listening. <laughs> it's right, right so here. It's the Olympus Mons, right? Olympus there. Mons. There we go. And just to give an idea how big that is, you could take the whole thing there and it would stretch across the state of Utah. Just ah, that one mountain. Yeah. Utah. How high is it? Uh, I don't remember. <sighs> yeah. It's a few times uh, the size of the, the height of Mount Everest. Oh, okay. Uh, not 100% sure. Like, so, I, I forgot, actually. So pretty damn I used to know, but I forgot. Unlike Everest, you could still be the first person to climb it. Yeah. How cool would that be? Who wants to go next? I'll go next. Oh, boy. Okay. All So... How many, what percentage of stars are part of multi-star systems? Ooh, that's I, a real astronomy question. Yes, it is. <laughs> that sounds like a question somebody like would have How just looked stars? up on their phone before the pot. No, I know you wouldn't no, do that. No, I, I know I've this, known, I've known <laughs> this for years. But this is the kind of small statistic that almost no one should know off the top of their Everyone head. Everyone should know this. I'm impressed. I, I got taught this in second grade. Okay. It's second grade. Yeah, it's second wow. grade. That's a Impressive. very specific grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know the answer. I have yeah. no idea. Obviously, it, it's I don't a know. hint. There's a lar- it's a large majority, 85% in fact. Oh. If you actually said what percentage, I, uh, I think we could have guessed. You said how many, right? Did he say how many? Or? He said what percent. Oh. That maybe was I, almost 30 seconds ago, so maybe, please don't hold me to it. Maybe it was the foreign in me that didn't understand that part. Yeah, that's probably, probably, yeah, that probably yeah. it. Yeah. So, Emma, okay. your turn. Well, um, I don't have a good space question off the top of my head. I have a pretty cool human body question. Okay. There it's, are... After all, this is a science oh, yeah. guess, right? Yeah. Yep, yeah. And science is not just above us. It is also around us and inside us, which is where we're going. Inside the human body. All okay. Right. There are all right. two organs in the human body that have the capability to regenerate themselves. Okay. As in, like, if you took a chunk off, it could heal back. What two organs are these? Um, it's kind liver? of a trick question. 
kid? Because I know I've messed up my liver. <laughs> and I'm, I'm still here. Don't ask how. Don't ask how. The please. liver is one of them. That's yeah. Why, oh. um, that's why liver transplants are one of some of the easiest transplants to do because you can just kind of stick a chunk of liver in there and it'll grow back pretty significantly. There is one more organ, though. Ooh. I'm just going to be honest and say I don't know. It's not a traditional organ. Not something you'd think of when you learn about the organs of the human body. Is it, it is the above largest or below the belt? <laughs> <laughs> it is the largest organ for on all the people? human body. For everyone, oh, okay. nobody has anything that's larger than this. Except maybe the bird brain? victims. The brain? No, it's not no. the brain. Except for skin. The skin. There we oh, go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that okay. was really loud. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hope you learned something today, I right? So. I did learn something. Yeah, me too. Interesting. Yeah, and I didn't. just for the record, we're we don't talk about the answers. Of, we don't even talk about the questions before the recording, no. right? This is true. Not we at all. do watch each other looking them up on our phones. So <laughs> <laughs> that counts. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with the first subject for. Uh, today's podcast, which is water in Mars. So um, NASA found through its MRO probe that orbits around Mars, um, signs that um, indicate existence of water in the planet. Now, they already knew that there was ice, like hard water, Yeah. to say it in a really stupid way. Because yep. if you take this Mars model here, for example, if you look at the north and south poles, you actually see some uh, white area in those. <laughs> uh, Trying to help out. Yeah. And um, so they already knew we had ice, and they were 90% sure there was liquid water flowing Mars somewhere. And they were like almost 100% sure Mars had water at some point in its existence. Because of... The way that some mountains and valleys look, it yes. seemed as if it had been formed by water moving through. Yeah, and that's exactly how they found. They use uh, a spectrometer, and uh, that analyzes like the 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 colors, you know, in uh, in the mountain. And uh, they found some uh, minerals that you usually find in uh, the water. So uh, some salty uh, minerals. So what? It was basically very similar to how it would look on Earth for, like, a dry riverbed where there had once, maybe millions of years ago, been a river, but at this point there's not. But there's those same trace minerals. Yeah, I actually saw a picture that uh, showed, like, half of Mars, like, the northern hemisphere of Mars being covered mostly by water, which was pretty interesting. I had not never seen anything like that before, and I thought it was really cool. But right now they believe that... Uh, there's water, a uh, water. <laughs> there's water flowing under the surface of the planet, which would be pretty cool. It would actually make our lives easier if you, we were to explore the planet in the future. Because um, of course, you can't just bring a bunch of water. It's very heavy. Yeah. And NASA already is per trying to perfect their water reclamation systems, but you know, no cycle is perfect there's always going to be something lost there so if they want to mm -hmm. have an installation on mars maybe if there's water beneath the surface that they can tap into and purify in whatever way humans need that's going to make everything way easier it's just one less thing to think about bringing millions of miles away and i don't think matt damon is available <laughs> i was going to bring that up to, yeah he had to make water because he didn't know make water if wow. the movie had come out maybe a month later, they could have added that in. You know what? I wonder if NASA didn't wait all this time to announce this. Right. Just because they hate Matt Damon. No, just because of the movie. Oh. So that people would go watch or the movie. Or they hate Matt Damon. No one hates Matt Damon. Yeah, he's pretty How cool. can you hate Jason Bourne? Yeah. Or Private Ryan. NASA yeah. hates Matt Damon. Yeah. Well, I, I can kind of understand Hashtag why you would hate people. Private Ryan. What's up? I can kind of understand why you would hate Private Ryan because, you know, they sacrifice a lot of people. Yeah, I did one see guy. the yeah. American government has true. spent a lot of money <laughs> saving Matt Damon. <laughs> First yeah. from Germany, then yeah. from Mars. Both incredibly alien and hostile environments. And robots. Not anymore. <laughs> you guys watch that? Not anymore. There's water on Mars. Da -da 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 -da. Right? Cool. Did you guys watch his uh, robot movie or whatever that he came up with a few years ago? 
Uh, I forgot what it, Elysium, right? Elysium. Elysium. Yeah, that was a good one. I, I did know. not see that was the one where there's a utopia up above the earth yeah, and a dystopia like that. below. Yeah. And you gotta try to get up there to the utopia. Yeah. I don't know how cool. robots were involved. Yeah. Did, I have no idea. Did either. Matt Damon make it? Yeah, of course he did. Of Thank course he goodness. did. Thank goodness. He, no. he was Private Ryan, it. and he was rescued. I mean, what else would you expect? Damon right? true, is a survivor. True. And Ben Affleck is always on the side messing everything up. You know what we should just do is we should just send Matt Damon to Mars. No, we should send him to Pluto, which is our next subject. Oh. That would be nice. Even oh. better. I, I have, I, I have, I'm positive that he would never come back. Oh. Is that a good <laughs> thing or a bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of Pluto, actually, that was another discovery that uh, NASA announced uh, last week. Uh, they actually confirmed uh, that uh, there was there is water ice in Pluto and uh, blue skies. So they actually took a picture with the uh, the New Horizon probe, mm -hmm. which is you know arrived at Pluto what month ago or so? Yeah, was, yeah about then. Yeah, about forty five days ago. Yeah, and um, they actually took a few pictures of uh, the surface of uh, Pluto, and they found. Using the same method they used in, in Mars, uh, water, ice, and they took a picture of uh, Pluto right behind the sun, and they could see like this blueish kind of layer around the planet, which reminds us of our sky, you yeah. know. And I thought that was something totally awesome. Like yeah, that I had, crazy. I would never thought that uh, Pluto had blue skies. I do have a concern. Yep. With this discovery, mm -hmm. is this just NASA's way of trying to get Pluto back in our good graces after calling it not a planet? I don't think Pluto I think has the, feelings. The, uh, are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Because it feels blue. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not actually, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sorry. That is actually a very good statement. And um, New Horizons is actually has an amazing job uh, bringing us all this information, and it also took some pictures of these other moons that Pluto has. I mean, mm -hmm. how come until you know a couple of years ago Pluto was not considered a planet, and it has like moons, like for real, you yeah. know, even though it's not a big planet, but it does have like its little things orbiting around it, and uh, some of the moons are actually kind of like the moons in Mars, like asteroid-looking kind of mm -hmm. moons. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool. There are a lot yeah. of pictures online. If you go to the NASA website, you can totally find a full article with images and the whole deal on that subject. Cool? Anything you guys would like to add about blue skies and Pluto? I already told my terrible joke. Yes, you did. No, <laughs> Pluto just needs to stay where it's at. And he can't be part of the cool kids club. That's all I have to say about Pluto. <laughs> Inner asteroid belt cool kids club? Yep, yep. Because you're excluding some big guys with that. No, they're not cool enough. All right, wow. <laughs> all right, let's talk about Halloween in astronomy or astronomy in Halloween, whatever you prefer. I'm so scared. <laughs> so, um, I had a talk with uh, our two astronomers, uh, Warren... <gasps> And uh, Jay. Oh my God. And uh, about to find out like what astronomy events happen during Halloween. And, the uh, spookiest, to be sure. Yes. So, um, one thing that happens right at October 31st is uh, the cross quarter, which is halfway between the winter. Um, Solstice and the autumnal equinox, which are like, you know, the change from halfway between, you know, when we are in fall and winter. Beginning of fall and... Uh, so, I have a question. Beginning of winter. Why yes. is it still so... I'm glad you raised so your hot. hand on this because audio podcast. Because we are in <laughs> Texas, bro. That's why. We had 103 yeah. degrees on Monday, right? How, what, wh how high? 103 degrees. In that is ridiculous. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. What is it about this cross quarter event that makes all the spooky ghosts come out? Is that do those have something to do with each other? Maybe the ghosts are like, ooh. Actually, I astronomy. I think <laughs> <laughs> I don't think those are related. Ghosts are real. NASA hates Matt Damon. Lizard people. <laughs> hashtag twenty fifteen. Uh, I think uh, it's because in some cultures uh, October thirty first is uh, All Saints Day. 
uh, and they do some crazy stuff that day and somehow and you got translated to another culture as like a spooky time of the year you know <laughs> oh, how Where you Halloween. get the monsters out of you you know that that time of the year oh, that's so an important thing to do to get those monsters out speaking of halloween andy what are we going to have here for halloween we are Other going to ghosts. have a great time that's, that's what's sure. happening here um the 30th and 31st which is that uh, friday and saturday uh, starting at 6, we're having our laser shows. Uh, and then those are happening from 6 to 10 every hour on the hour. And they are priced for uh, one is going to be $5. If you come to see three, there will be uh, $10. If you want to see all five, they're at the low, low price of $20. Wow. What right? a great deal. It is. And then after the laser shows is when the real fun starts, where we will be showing Psycho. Oh, right? the original uh, one. Oh, yeah, by, the good one, right? Yeah, by the genius Alfred Hitchcock. There awesome. might be ghosts. Ooh, we maybe. don't know. They do not RSVP. <laughs> Terrible guests. <laughs> and Psycho, it will be $6 and less. You go to the CTC Haunted House. Which is going to be conveniently located right outside the building, isn't that it? That is correct, Emma. Wow. You can go laser show. Haunted House, Haunted House Laser Show. Yeah, and, and uh, you get a $2 off coupon when you go over to the Haunted House. So the best deal is watch Combine Laser Show with the Haunted House. Yes. And October 30th and 31st. Yeah, awesome. and both nights. And also uh, Saturday morning, we're still having our normal shows, so you can bring the kids out to Spookily. Awesome. And the Storytime event, which involves yes. a craft yes. and a book reading as well as a Spookily movie. Yep, that is true. Great. And then also don't forget what's on the 24th. Warren Star yeah, Tour. Warren Star Tour at <gasps> 5.30. Less ghosts there than at Halloween. I'm not going to say no ghosts because that's just a dangerous statement to make, but definitely less ghosts. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully at least. <laughs> Hopefully less ghosts. The closer we get to Halloween, the more ghosts we're going to have, right? Yep. It's, there, it's a bell curve of ghosts. Oh, yeah. that's smart. Very smart. Good to know. It's very science. Yeah. All right. Anything else, you guys? I don't have anything. Um, you have Mars. Just I do have <laughs> Mars forever. <laughs> just guys, watch out for those ghosts. I'm very, I'm very concerned about everyone's safety sure. and ghosts. I, sure, I wouldn't be sure. Thank you for watching and listening, and uh, we'll see you I'll next you. month with another edition of the CTX Science Cast. Thank you for watching. Say your goodbyes, guys. The end. Bye. And he turned off his mic like he thought it was <laughs> over. But See then he had time. to say goodbye. <laughs>